Good morning from New York, and welcome to this trip report about Qatar Airways' flagship North American route from New York's JFK. The flagship part, I guess, is up for interpretation, but the rest, I assure you, is all above board. This is the first of three flights that I'll be taking from New York to Phu Quoc, a small island in the far south of Vietnam. Today, we're going to explore JFK's Terminal 8, the Greenwich Lounge, everything Q Suites, and how you know if your plane has them or not, all of the food and drinks on board, and of course, the full experience as a whole. But first, we gotta get to the airport. The New York metro area has three primary airports, including Newark Liberty International, United Tub in New Jersey, LaGuardia, New York's most convenient airport, generally speaking, and then the biggest of the three, New York JFK, or simply Kennedy, as it's called locally. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I think that the internet is in need of a whole lot more honesty when it comes to airline and hotel content, and that's why I'm here. I make airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews, and I always self-fund my trips. In fact, you'll always be able to find the exact price that I paid in the description below. I don't alert any companies that I'll be filming because I want as normal of an experience as possible. So in this video today, I'm going to give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, and unbiased opinion about my own experience. At the moment, JFK has five terminals which are conveniently named Terminal 1, Terminal 4, Terminal 5, Terminal 7, and Terminal 8. Last year, Kennedy served 55.5 million passengers, making it the 11th busiest airport by passenger traffic on Earth. Terminal 8, where we are now, is American Airlines' home at Kennedy. Years ago, when American had a larger operation here, they expanded and refurbished the terminal, which was then underutilized for quite some time. So they decided to invite all of their One World friends over to join them. Last year, British Airways left behind the scrappy Terminal 7 and moved in here, along with Cathay Pacific, Qatar Airways, and a few others. The check-in hall was relatively pretty quiet, with Qatar having a sizable spread of check-in desks open for this one of their now three daily flights from JFK. But at the time, it was more like one and a half daily. They actually started their first service to the US back in 2007 to New York, but to Newark and via Geneva. A little bit of a strange grand entrance. Here in JFK though, of my 130 or so trip reports that I've ever filmed, this is the first time that I've ever been asked to stop filming in such a benign location like a check-in hall. Once through security, we are kind of literally in the middle of Americana. Well, that's not tacky at all. When British Airways moved to Terminal 8, American opened three new lounges that would be shared between the two. The Chelsea, the Soho, and Greenwich lounges, all neighborhoods that both London and New York have. I knew one of them was fancy, one was kinda fancy, and one was regular, but I haven't been to Terminal 8 in ages, so I wasn't sure which one to go to. My check-in agent simply told me, you'll see the signs for the lounge after security. Thanks, bud. So, if you're flying Qatar in business, and you don't have any upper one world status, you'll be heading to the Greenwich Lounge, which is the regular one. But still, pretty nice, I gotta say. Once inside, it was pretty busy but manageable. A decent breakfast spread, and plenty of drinks and seating areas. This is your friendly reminder to please click that thumbs up button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video today. Those two things, along with sharing with friends and family, are three of the best ways that you can help to support the channel continue to grow. If you'd like to support even further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. There was also a quiet room, which everyone seemed like they were allergic to. Myself included, since I much prefer to have the apron views.
At the time of my review, my flight was not operating daily, and so the aircraft that we're taking today arrived 12 hours ago and spent the night here. So now it's being towed over to the gate. Okay, time to head over to gate six. This is where terminal eight starts to feel a bit like a hospital with great views. Once out of the central hall area, it all feels a bit sterile and boring. As of the beginning of November 2023, Kennedy is now again seeing 777-300s three times a day. But our aircraft today is the FIFA Special Livery 777-200LR. Luckily, my aircraft today did have Q suites. If you want to see what I found to be the most up-to-date info, generally speaking, about Qatar's fleet and which of the aircraft have Q suites, I've linked a website in the description below, which is pretty comprehensive. If you know someone who has flown Qatar Airways, then you also likely know someone who has been qatar or so it's called. So Qatar advertises these incredible Q suites, the best in the world, etc, etc. But the truth of the matter is, they currently have three very distinct long-haul business class products in use. As we began to come out of COVID, the instances of being qatar that is, when you book Q suites but then they change the aircraft to a different layout, increased due to Qatar's dispute with Airbus about their A350s. I'll get into that more in my next Qatar video, but essentially, they grounded many of their A350s with Q suites, and so as travel demand picked back up, they had to reinstate quite a few older aircraft with older configurations. As of September of this year, all of their A350 1000s have Q suites, as do all of their 787-9s, but it's a different type of Q suite. 10 of their 33 A350-900s have them, but the other 23 have a decent reverse herringbone product, also in a 1 to one configuration. The problem generally lies with the 777s. 7 of their 9 777-200s have Q-suites, and 38 of their 48 777-300s have them. They're making progress, but those 12 777 holdouts certainly leave a bad taste in some mouths with their 222 configuration. As for the 787-8s, A330s, and A380s, there are no plans to bless them with Q-suites. Qatar currently uses their 253 aircraft to fly to 198 international destinations, 12 of which are in North America. I know that Canada has tight control over airport slots, but I was shocked that Qatar doesn't even fly to Toronto or Vancouver for that matter, only Montreal. I, I didn't go anywhere. I was at the gate the entire time before boarding started, but somehow I'm all the way back here online. Anyway, let's get on board as Group 7 is called in a rapid-fire auctioneer kind of way. Let's check out today's flight stats. We departed and arrived a few minutes ahead of schedule, and we were in the air for 12 and a half hours for our less-than-direct 6,700-mile route to Doha. As I stepped on board, I was greeted. I wouldn't say warmly. It was more of a... Hi. I walked to my seat and I filmed the same shot that I always do, but I'm going to cut the last few seconds off. As I arrived to my seat, I stopped recording and then a flight attendant who was standing in my suite told me with an unexpectedly condescending attitude, Sir, you're not allowed to film the crew on this flight. It is strictly against policy and you must delete any video with crew in it now. Okay, so Qatar Airways is like the most filmed airline ever. That's not actually a policy, but in this case, it's neither here nor there since I don't ever purposely film crew interactions. But he could have just dialed the attitude back 12 degrees before getting that off his chest. Lucky for me, he turned out to be my flight attendant. Yay. Okay, let's take a deep dive into Q suites. First, let's take a look at the cabin layout. In a one-to-one -one layout, which alternates between front and rear-facing seats, the business class cabin is split into two smaller cabins with a total of 11 rows and 42 seats. If you've ever booked a flight with Qatar, when selecting your seats, you may have noticed that most center section seats are blocked from selecting. This is so that the airline can manage the quads. There are five quads on this aircraft. Each quad has four seats, which face each other, and if you reserve all four of them, you can slide the monitors in the middle to the sides to create your own four suite apartment of sorts. If you're traveling as a couple or a quad and the seat assignments that you want are blocked, just call Qatar for seat assignments. For today's flight, I had three alpha, a rear facing true window seat. All the true window seats are rear facing and I know that some don't like it, but 
honestly, you really can't tell except for like the first five minutes after takeoff. And I kind of like it because you get to watch the engine from your seat without cricking your neck back. Let's explore the space. There are a couple small things that I'm not in love of when it comes to Q suites, but I do have to say, overall, looking at the seat as an efficient use of space that truly gives you everything that you need, all at your fingertips too, they're all in convenient locations. The Q suites really cannot be beat. Even my beloved Apex suites cannot compare when it comes to layout and storage. Q suites also have some of the best quality and best looking materials out there. The seat fabric breathes well. The leather surfaces wear well. The quilted and fabric panels add a bit of dimension, and the faux marble table and gold trim adds just a little bit of class. It's a beautiful product. Next to you is a storage cubby, which also moves up and down as an armrest. Note that for the forward-facing seats, this storage space is against the wall and is a bit larger in capacity. My favorite storage area is actually under the tray table here with a thoughtful lip around the edge so that your amenity kits, AirPods, and iPhones don't go flying. Pre-departure drinks and pre-packaged diptyque towelettes were passed around. I asked for champagne. He asked me if I wanted brut or rosé. I asked for rosé. He came back a few minutes later and again asked brut or rosé. Rosé. A few minutes later, he came back and brought me a glass of Brut. Oh well. I'll say, if you ever watched my previous Philadelphia to Doha Q Suites video linked above and below now, this whole pre-departure experience today was a very stark contrast to the incredible service that I had last time. Side note, I love Diptyque. I don't think I've ever met anyone that doesn't, but I'm not convinced with these towelettes. I'd still prefer an actual towel. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to hit subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. Luckily, these aircraft do have individual air vents, though for some of the rear-facing rows, they're a little bit awkwardly behind you. At the seats, there are also today's menus and a bottle of water. The jet bridge was pulled back, the safety video began, and we pushed back. We would have a little bit of a longish taxi today to runway 22 right, passing by many of the cargo facilities. Props for choosing a product that makes the moving map so accurate. We lined up and got ready to go. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up next.
We had a less than direct route today, partially to move around some bad weather a couple of times and partially to avoid certain airspace. It did give some pretty incredible views later on though. So you likely know that one of the key features about Q-Suites are in fact the doors. After reaching cruising altitude, they'll be unlocked and you can choose to use them if you wish. They're just tall enough to prevent most eye contact with other passengers walking through the aisles, unless of course they're standing right next to you. When lying down though, they really do provide quite a bit of privacy. Let's take a look at the comfort items on today's flight. I never really understood these flimsy little pillows. To me, they just never really fit into Qatar's branding, and they don't really serve that much of a purpose. Luckily, there was another one which was pretty firm, though I do wish it was a little less oblong. Headphones are one area where I've always thought Qatar could do a little bit better. They're just standard noise-canceling headphones. Of the others that are out there of this caliber, I think Singapore and Cathay's are better. They certainly beat most of the competition with their diptyque amenity kits though. For flights flying to Doha, it comes in a paper box. For flights departing from Doha, you'll get the same contents, but in a leatherette pouch. Qatar's blankets are substantial and pretty heavy, with one side being plush and the other being a bit stiffer. Last up, the pajamas. I know they were available, I saw some other passengers getting them, but they weren't proactively offered on this flight for some reason. Since I don't actually use them, I didn't bother to ask for a pair since I knew I could just show you my old clip. They're the same pajamas, and they're soft enough and great considering this is business class, but nothing really groundbreaking here. A drink service began soon after takeoff, and warm nuts were also passed out. Here's the full menu for the flight. Note that the red prices on the wines are my addition to the graphic to give you an idea of the value on board. Everything is still free. Orders were taken for our first meal on the ground. Qatar is fully a la carte in service, in theory at least, anything at any time. Since we were still on the ground, I could hear the couple passengers in front of me with their orders. The first two ordered the Brazilian lobster tail with seafood bisque, and that was that. Sold out. I'll assume that there were four crew taking orders, each with two in their stock. Eight of what is clearly going to be the most popular dish for the cabin of 42 seems a little bit weak. Also, by row four, just behind me, he was saying that he needed to check on surf and turf inventory. Not sure if the row behind me actually got it or not. Tables were set, and I'm going to read you a quote that I wrote while on board. Quote, Qatar's problem is, some of their crew are too good. Unquote. Besides the first bit of attitude, there was nothing offensively bad about the service today but there was also absolutely nothing remarkable. Service was swift, but pretty careless. The champagne mix-up was given still water instead of sparkling. Totally forgot that I ordered an appetizer. Forgot that I asked to change wines for the main. Placed down the amuse, which is not listed on the menu with zero explanation. Just a lot of small missteps, which started to get annoying when they happened one after the other. Anyway, the food. Just about everything was delicious. First up, I had the Manhattan clam chowder, which was a wonderful texture. Often I find Manhattan style to be a little bit too thin. That was supposed to be followed by the prawn appetizer, but that ended up coming after my main. This dish as a whole was phenomenal. The steak was overdone, but that's just what I expect. But it was still very tender, and the potato gratin, and even the kale, I hate kale, was really delicious. After passing my alter ego sea mount, the starter arrived. This was very acidic and lemon forward, but the shrimp were nicely cooked. My only disappointment for this meal was the dessert. I know, I know, I ordered berries. What could I possibly be expecting? But I got them because they came with black pepper syrup, something that is very intriguing to me with the dessert. Well, the syrup tasted like absolutely nothing. So yeah, I had wet berries, that sounds odd. And now for your 10 second toilet tour. It was outfitted nicely with Diptyque products and dental kits, but a bit of bonus footage shows us that by the time we crossed into Egypt, all of the bathrooms started to look like they had seen some stuff.
While I was in the bathroom, they put the bed cover on the seat. At the time, I asked them just to leave it up as a seat. The cover is very thin, but when it comes to these, I'm always on team anything clean is better than nothing. And here's how the bed looks fully flat. The measurements of the bed are decent, but as a side and stomach sleeper, the fact that the seat doesn't actually go truly fully flat, just a couple of degrees off, I know, but that combined with the protruding headrest means that full flat sleep is just not an option for me. But I know most would sleep just fine. Ah, I almost forgot. My in-seat power didn't work. This turned into way more of a thing than was necessary. They reset the power, still didn't work. Fine. Honestly, no problem. I simply asked, when my power bank is dead, can you recharge it for me? Somewhere. They said yes. A few hours later, I gave it to them to charge. Some hours after that, I asked for it back. And they had no idea what I was talking about. It took them around 20 minutes to find the thing. Anywho, enjoy the beautiful sunset as we cross over southern Spain. I was really tempted to put the entire 44 minute piece in here, but I resisted. Let's take a look at the in-flight entertainment, which Qatar does really well with. Plenty of movies and full seasons of shows on offer, and a really great in-flight map. My only complaint is that the in-flight map has lots of really bright ads that pop up, making it not great when the cabin is dark. As we passed over Algiers, I had a look at the light options on the menu. I ordered a farro and pumpkin salad, which was as delicious as it was beautiful, followed by the steak and cheese panini, which was around a 6 out of 10. Then, the second full meal service began as the sun began to rise over the Red Sea. Frankly, I wasn't really hungry, but hey, for YouTube, I eat. I had the coconut mango and passion fruit smoothie, which was easily the best smoothie that I've ever had in the air, along with my first of many iced Americanos. Props to any airline that can actually pull off an iced Americano or just an iced real espresso. For starters, I had the cold cuts plate, which was good, but just maybe felt like they were trying a bit too hard. Following that, I'm going to actually call this dessert. Quite possibly the best dessert that I've ever had on a plane. I didn't want airplane eggs, so I chose the ricotta and pineapple stuffed pancakes. I'm generally an American style pancake purist. Pancakes, a little butter, maple syrup. For these though, I will change. And just look how beautifully plated it was. This was phenomenal. The sun continued to rise, as it generally does, as we crossed over Saudi Arabia. And before the final descent, the crew passed around chocolates and, for lack of a better phrase, seemed to turn on their friendly buttons. Suddenly, in the last 30 minutes of the flight, they were engaging and very pleasant. Odd.
Enjoy the descent and landing into Doha. Airport stats are also coming up. I had a two hour connection to my flight to Bangkok. That's generally plenty of time in my book. But then we parked at the most remote of remote stands. I mean, we were almost in Bahrain. I think they had a total of six buses for the plane, two for business and four for economy. I got stuck on the second business class bus, which stayed there for quite a while. I couldn't really get a feel for the layout, but due to what seemed like a lot of ground level construction, it took a solid 25 minutes from the time I got on the bus until we actually got to the terminal, making for a much tighter connection than I planned. I suppose at least we got lots and lots and lots of views of the aircraft on the ground. Okay, so let's wrap this up. Overall, by the vast majority of standards, it was a fantastic flight, and, and it was. But an airline in this day and age is only as good as their least enthusiastic crew. The crew on my flight made it feel a bit more like United than Qatar. For those of you that don't know, that is not a compliment. That being said, I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please be sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my twice weekly uploads. I put out full length videos every Thursday and Saturday. I'll see you next time at the absolutely disappointing Fairmont Jaipur. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.